this video is being recorded. So okay, I love it. I love it so much, right? I, love I it. never ever have, have to be, be like, confused. Am I recording? Wait, is that a red? Oh wait, welcome to the women's cave, y'all. Oh right, because <laughs> that's what we forgot. Welcome to the women's cave, y'all. You know, we do not we do not tell our guests that we tend to forget our own name. Wow. No. Yeah, we do. Today we just forgot the name of the show. <laughs> just totally forgot it completely. Yeah, then absolutely. Okay, so I'm Jane. And I'm Wilnona. We have members to introduce our five uh, uh, high social distance so stuff. Hope so it's still out here. Still here. Hope it's still out here. All right. So, <laughs> well, no, no, I, think, I think we wrote books because I think the banter is done. Don't, we just, done. When you forget the name of your own show, you're like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's over. It's over. All right. So, and I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. If only I would meet a memoir and first. Um, and I thought being grown up was easy. What else? What are you, wait, wait, Widow's Web? There's something else? Born Coffee, all available on all of them. Woo, y'all, y'all, that was a lot. I remembered, yes. <laughs> and she included my book. And, okay, so, so all available on audible.com or the other book. There's a couple more are gonna be soon available on Audible, y'all. We are really doing the thing. I'm excited Woo! for us. All right, but you know, that's enough of You can find out uh, everything your ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com. All right, well, that's enough about us. Y'all ain't here to hear more about us talking about the record, but you're here to hear from our wonderful guest that actually came back, which is amazing. And we really appreciate it. <laughs> wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, 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 everyone. My name is Marlon Saunders. It's good to be back, sisters. It's good to see you both. Yes, so how are we going to chop it up today? What are we going to do? We're going to talk a little bit about music, y'all. We're going to pretend like we know something we know about music. We know nothing about music. Although, I am going to announce right now I am the narcissist. So I have to say one thing about me. Oh my goodness. Okay. I apologize, Marlon. You didn't have the narcissist the last time. <laughs> <laughs> we are actually going to come out with an album. It's not really, y'all. We're just we're just reading our poetry and someone's putting some music behind it. But we have Thank to you, do it rhythmically. So now Thank we're, you, we're very we're very concerned about what happens with music. Uh, Marlon, we're not good at this. So um, any tips? Jay, any any tip? tips on how to be good? How to be decent while reading and having music in the background? Well, I mean, there are two things I was thinking about. It's like, you know, you could always have asked me, like, Marlon, you know what? We're going to put this record out. We're going to do, you know, we're going to read our poetry. Maybe you can kind of help us out. I'd be more than happy to help you, you know, work it through if you need to. You and, if you need, and if you need an extra track, I'll even compose a track for you. What? Oh my goodness. Like, like you, we are going to say yes to that. You're amazing. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'll compose I, have the track. I just wiped it out. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's, talk yeah, about let's talk about music. Um, what it means to you and what it, what do you think music means to the world? Well, okay. I think music to me is, uh, it's been such an, an important part of my life ever since I can remember. So it's kind of like an, assess, an essential part of me. Um, it, the vibration of the sound, you know, uh, hearing uh, musicians come together and to create something out of a space that they are feeling and believing and sharing is communal. It's the first thing and the most, I feel the most important thing about being human is we need human connection and human contact which in turn makes me think that music is always, has always been a part of us as human beings. You know, the interesting thing, the very fact that we were going back and forth, rhythmically talking, laughing, knowing, not even thinking about it is music because it's rhythmical. And, you know, there, even though we're speaking, we're speaking, but our voices aren't speaking on the same thing at the same time all the way through. It's moving up and down. So even that is pitch related, you know? So music is pitch, music is rhythm, mu music is vibration, it's connection. So it's one of those things like when you look at any indigenous culture, music was not like something that they went and they bought the music. Music was a part of the day-to-day -day process. You know, you sang, you prayed, you danced, you sang, you worked, you sang. So it's, it was a way to bring people together. And we all know when we hear good music or when we hear a good beat, or when we hear a good bass line, it does something to us. It makes us feel a certain way. So I believe that music is also, it's very spiritual. You know, it's very, very spiritual. It's universally connected to vibration. And that's why we as human beings respond the way that we do. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know that like music is essential for my life. I know yeah. that. Okay, when Jake is up in the morning, she has a soundtrack. Yes, I have my morning soundtrack. All the way through the day. Yes. <laughs> She's like, I can't, she cannot live without hearing music like one day. But then um, Jade's dad is the same way. He's an older gentleman. And he doesn't really know how to work technology, but he knows how to cut, get his Amazon app and cut on his music. <laughs> so he knows. He is so, right. it is and so then uh, one day his phone broke, not because anything else stopped working, just because the music stopped working. And he was like, let's just, <laughs> and he was like, immediately, he called me immediately. We like, have to get a phone in the immediately. Hour. Immediately. <laughs> He broke at 10, he had a new phone by 1230. <laughs> Immediately. He was like, no, put, I'm, I got the app back on. I had to rest the phone work. <laughs> I'm not worried about anything except I get my music. <laughs> right, right. There it is. It's like a morning coffee. Oh, man. No, I'd like to conclude, um, as a narcissist, you know, I know no. how important accomplishments are. No, it's not about me. Oh, no, okay. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, Jay, she set us up like we were going to go, you know, she set it up like, you know, the narcissist that I am. So I thought she, she's going to be like, I sing in the morning, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'll be like, you know, I sing from Sarah Vaughn to, you know, Beyonce, back to Leontine Price, back to Billie Holiday. I was, you know, I thought you going to give me all that. I found out I can't sing blues. All right. Yeah. So I, I, was in, I was in opera performing classes, like for, as solo, as a solo artist, learning how to do yeah. that for five years. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And I decided one year that I was going to sing the blues. It didn't matter what <laughs> I said, I was singing the blues. <laughs> she heard me sing the blues. She said the blues cry. Um, <laughs> so no, no Philly holiday for me. I mean, I love Philly <laughs> holiday yeah. though. Like I listen to it. Oh man. No, let's talk about your accomplishments. You have yes. done so much. So mm. how do you go from, I don't know, like Stevie Wonder tour to like putting together an album over here to putting a soundtrack over there and then being in a movie? Like how do you do it? <laughs> You know, it's, it's a very interesting thing, like the journey of anyone's career, I believe. I think if, if, if you have pretty much a, a sense of a dream or a goal or a vision, you know, it's my belief that if you work and see that goal, no matter what's happening, we forget that, you know, universe of God has things that we may not even have realized in store. So as long as we're moving forward, you know, we get nice little, uh, additions, nice little gravy trains that come in. So for me, I, I knew that I was going to do music. I did music growing up as a kid. I grew up in the church singing and playing. And um, then I started playing saxophone and then they had me take piano lessons. And um, it, it came to me very easy. You know, it was a very, very easy thing for me to do. I went away to, to college. I first got, went to Baltimore to Peabody Conservatory. And I studied there and I studied classical for like a year and a half. And then, and my main gig was classical saxophone, which was a very odd thing anyway, but um, I was good at it. You know, I could read very fast and play every, all of the difficult uh, work. So in their minds, they were like, yo, this is like a serious thing. There's this young black kid. He's playing this classical saxophone. We're gonna mold him and build him and have him go and compete and do all of these things. But in my mind, you know, Luther Vandross's Busy Body record came out and I heard those backgrounds and, you know, Shaka Khan's record came out and I just heard these backgrounds and I heard all of this beautiful music and these arrangements and I thought, man, I really want to do that. Like, I really want to get in that world. I want to figure out, and I wasn't necessarily in my mind ever thinking I want to be a soloist. I want to be out front and be famous. That was, I just wanted to be in that studio and it's to be like, who's singing on, on those backgrounds? So I started doing research, looking, Patty Austin showed up, you know, um, Fonzie Thornton was the name who showed up, Tawatha Aji from M2 May, she showed up. So these were people I just started following on every, on every production. And they would be, when it would be recorded in New York, these people would be singing on everything. And I thought, man, what it would be like to be able to work and sing with them. So I thought, I'm gonna leave Peabody and I need to figure out how to get this happening. And I left a full, complete ride. And my dad was like, this ain't happening. You're not leaving. Like, no, you, you can't leave this. And so I ended up going to Berkeley. And it was exactly what I needed to be. Berkeley College of Music. And, you know, they taught all the things that I wanted to know. How to be in a studio. How to sing around a mic. How to arrange vocals. All that stuff. 
and my dream, my goal was like, I want to come to New York and I want to be a session singer. And everybody was like, you'll never break in. There's only like 60 singers. The 60 singers do, they sing on everything. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to break in. And they were like, you should probably, you know, do, you know, get, learn some songs and get ready to be in a wedding band. I was like, I'm doing that. I'm going to, I'm going to get into this thing. And then I came to New York and, um, you know, I got on a, my first tour was with actually Samantha Fox and I had just come out of school and she had a big hit, I Wanna Have Some Fun. I did that tour. I had never been out of the country. This was tour was supposed to be three months and then it ended up being 11 months. So what it did was it allowed me uh, to see the world first off singing on a stage. So I was like, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. And, but then it also allowed me to come off of the tour and have time. Like I had time to just kind of sit down hustle, start to get my word, get my name out, try to get people to listen to my reel. And of course it was slamming the door, slamming the door, slamming the doors. But I had read this book that said, you know, in order to hustle, you have to have a system. So they told, they said like you, you make notes of who you've mailed out your, you know, what companies you've mailed out, who you spoke to, what date you did it. And then two weeks later, follow it up, make sure you connect with the person who basically answers the phone call, da, 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 da. So I just did what the book told me to do. And it just so happens that Miller Lite at this time, they needed a, they wanted a new black male voice. And so in this one particular music house, the guy came in and he was like, we need a new, we need a new voice. Do you have anybody? Do you have anybody? And lo and behold, that day, the mail of my reel, probably for like the sixth time, had been delivered. And she said, God, this guy always, let me just open it up. And she put it on and he was like, get that guy. And so she called me and said, we have a Miller Lite commercial. In my mind, I'm thinking, oh, wow, I'm, I'm gonna finally be in the studio to sing some backgrounds, I'm gonna go. And I, and I get to the studio and, and all of the people I had dreamt about, Diva Gray, Frank Floyd, Fonzie Thornton, they were all there. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna sing with them. And she was like, no, 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 no. You're, they're gonna sing for you today. You're the lead. And I was like, what? So that, be, that, was, that commercial was my entryway into the session world. And so then from there, everything started to change. Long story short, I was able to have a career where I was able to do session work with, the, with all of those greats and learn. Fonzie Thornton and Tawatha were my mentors, which was amazing. And then from there, I got, a tour, I got to work with Billy Joel on the River of Dreams tour. So all of these things happening gave me the cachet I needed to then move around and to, and to begin to work with others. And then other things like, like Enchanted just fell in. Like it came through a manager that I had at the time and they needed somebody and I went in and I, I didn't even audition. I just interviewed with the director. He kind of liked my vibe and hired me. So That's that was long, no, but. <laughs> no, no, it was wonderful. And I, I kept, okay, so. We read your website about your, your bio. And then for my for the audience today, we were supposed to have two other co-hosts. Um, <clears throat> and they could make it. But their manager made them do a deep dive research <laughs> for a week. And wow. then they came back with what uh, uh, what they had found out. And I went, good God, I don't even know why he even knows my name. <laughs> not, not my name, why he even knows Shane's name. Because I'm as soon as we should have sent out the email and he should have just sent out like a, a face and said, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> With all those eyes on it. Yeah. Uh, but no, I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate you talking about how you just kept pursuing it, right? Because a lot of times as authors, like we're um, indie published, we're self published, but a lot of times as authors, you get really discouraged, right? Because you keep sending, sending it to try to get in the house, you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And you know what they say? No, or yeah. you don't get anything, or it's cricket, or it's this, or it's that. And you get discouraged by that. But like you saying, you broke into the music world by just keep going. So yeah. for all my authors out there and musicians, just keep going. My next question has to be my little fun question because we, as a narcissist, like I put me first now. You know this now. <laughs> now you know, now you know. <laughs> because we tour like 26 to 35 weeks out of the year. Well, not and not, recently. not recently because of COVID. But I know it's cool what a tour life is like for us. What is tour life like in the music business? Tour life. It's a, it's a very interesting thing. Like, I, 
you know, I was part of a group called Jazz Hole. So that's a different type of tour. Touring with you when you're the artist is, is totally different than when you're trying to break ground and, and move it. We were signed to Atlantic, so we didn't start out just by being independent, but you gotta be, a, we were in a van with a band, going to hotel, the hotel. And at the same time, it was funny because like I would come off of a tour with a big artist and then jump on a tour with Jasper, but with a big artist, it's completely different. You know, you're flying, you're going to four or five star hotels. I don't have to think about anything except being to sound check. I get on the stage, I sound check, I come back, I go have dinner, I come back, I do my gig. At the end of the week, I get my money. You know, it's a different, so that life being on the road as a background singer, it's like, yo, I'm, I'm just coasting. I'm, I'm here to do my job. My job happens to be that I'm playing big arenas, but it's good. You know, when you're the artist, you're grinding. You're trying to, because you're trying to build. And that takes, again, this whole notion of you got to every day see your vision. And I think one of the things that I say to when I mentor young artists is, you got to be able to just take a piece of paper, like a white uh, cardboard paper or something, and just get a black marker and just write no completely all over the, the paper. Hold it up in front of you and literally just see the no's, just see them. And then once you're done with that, put the paper down, close your eyes and see how you feel. If you feel despondent, if you feel like defeated, if you feel all that, then you got to reevaluate because you, the worlds of a creative person is no until yes. So you've got to be armored up in such a way in your mind that you already, you're going in trying to convince that person, but the no just hits you and ricochets off because you wow. got to you gotta go into, because there's, there's a yes, but it, a lot of times the yes doesn't come from what we, like this easy road that we've imagined. And that's when I believe Universal God has something in store that we make, we can't see at that moment. So you got to be able to have it ricochet off and get your, get your ass back up, bounce up, and whatever you need to do, talk to your friends, hang out, call a mentor, pray, meditate, whatever, work out to get yourself back so that the next day you get up, despite, despite the doubt, the fear, the worry, the shit, I can't pay my, da, 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 all of that's good, it's real, you know, it's real. So you still gotta be able to have somewhere in your mind that that vision still can come through. And that's, that's the game. And the other thing to remember is anyone you meet, you have to treat them with respect. You have to treat them with an open heart because that one person could be the thing that gets you in. That could be the person that makes the connection. It could be a year from now, two years from now, two days from now, you know, three years from now. But that's one thing we have to remember that everybody that we're talking to that that assistant on the phone could end up being the VP for that company. And if you're like letting that assistant, you know, you're reading that, talking mad stuff to that assistant, rude, whatever, that assistant ain't gonna ever get you not thinking about you anymore. So we have to remember that our talent, our gifts is a small part of the business. The business is about relationships. You know, people often say, Oh, how did I get on that gig? Or how did I get on this gig? You have to remember when you're on tour, you out on the road for six months, nine months, a year, a year and a half. You need to be with people that are going to be on time, that can get along with others, that aren't going to be like causing a lot of drama. That because when you're on the road, you're on the road representing that artist. So you got to make sure that you are where you need to be so that everything fa falls in place. Especially like with, with Stevie's tour, it was so many people involved so everybody is important one person that decides they're going to do it and go left now you've been completely threw everything off wow. how does it feel now like teaching you teach now right i teach as well yeah oh it's as well i thought you were <laughs> retired and now you no. just teach you're never gonna retire don't say, yeah. that. don't say that i mean i don't i don't uh i mean the only touring work that i've will probably still do once we open back up fully is like I work with a Japanese uh, arranger, producer, guitarist, Jiro Yoshida. It's one of the most amazing bands that I've been in. Life. And so we were set up to go tour before pandemic. So we'll go back out, but not, and I'm, I'm part of a group called Ikram and the Immigrant Groove. 
And we were slated to go to uh, the Jazz Festival, St. Lucia, and then we were supposed to go to Senegal Jazz Festival, just right. Of course, COVID came. So those are two things I think about, like I contribute in terms of touring, I would do, because I really do enjoy that. And then a lot, some of the other stuff I do is like vocal contracting. Like I, there, I got, got two calls, I have to put together two choirs, one for uh, a video thing that's going to be happening actually on Sunday that's celebrating the nurses, you know, for through COVID. And then the other is for, it's a record date, but I can't remember who the artist is. So that keeps me busy contracting. And then I also do, I'm faculty at NYU at the Clyde Davis School and at the new school, which I love, you know, it's adjunct. And then I have my own private company. You know, once I started to, to move and, and 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 what we call aging out when you when you you're no longer the first call because you're no longer 25 so you got to start in my mind because of great mentors who said yo you're making good money save your money Fonzie said to me this ain't gonna last save your money and so I listened to him and then I thought well what else could I do and I thought well I do like I'm really good at I can hear someone's voice and be like you need to do this 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 place it hit I don't know why but I just can do that so I started that business and thanks to uh, Broadway singers and actors, Rashidra Scott, Kimberly Marable and LaChance, all three sisters, they became my clients and they were involved in sister act and when LaChance was done, some, I mean, everyone knows LaChance and they began this whole, there's a whole black Broadway thing online. They were having a discussion about black singers in New York, black teachers in New York, who could help black singers from a black perspective. And LaShawns came up in there and she was like, my teacher is Marlon Saunders. I just started, he's helping me through the dawn of summer thing. Then Kimberly Marable, who was in Hades Town, was like, da 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 da. And then, you know, Rashidra Scott, who was in the um, Carol King musical, it shifted everything. And I had just had prayed maybe the uh, like a month before, like, I'm so grateful for all the artists I have and all the people I get to work with. But wouldn't it be great if I just had a nice, you know, resurgence of Black artists coming in to help them? And the prayer was answered. So my, my vocal coaching business took off. And then I have Elle Winter, who's a pop artist. So she's on this side. So it just blossomed, you know. And now I'm trying to really think about over the next year or so, we're trying to just put a lot of that uh, seamless voice information online so that people can, you know, kind of get it online, pay. I'll set up a little, there'll be workshops, you know, little videos that they can watch so that they don't have to necessarily be like, I can't get through, I can't get a lesson, I can't get a lesson. And it also allows me time to, to just come down and have crab cakes with John. Absolutely. <laughs> you know yeah. that's right. I was trying to figure out how we were going to work our cakes. Yeah, well, thank you. Yes. Don't even have to ask about that. We are nailing this through and through, and crab cakes are serious business. Well, he's from this more serious <laughs> But it is serious it's business. It's essential. Like, my mama was like, okay, so when you come back in September, because we ate the ones that we had, that I had for you, but you can't take them back because you flew, I'm going to make some more for you so that you can take them back when you go in September. They'll already be frozen. All I have to do is just put them in the fridge and I'll have a bunch. <laughs> you want to just adopt another food person? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. take. Now you want to take that man? I just want two. <laughs> <laughs> two each or just two? Two. Go, oh, one, one, each. One, one each. Okay, just check. Go in, like, we don't want to get greedy. Go, go in and be humble. Girl, just be humble. Take <laughs> what you get. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. It sounds like that's why I like hanging out. This is why I like hanging out with y'all. I, mean, I knew I was going to laugh. I already knew. You know, and that's so funny because every time we have someone like at, at your level on, I'm like, we need to be more professional. Stop laughing. And it so, never works. It never works, but just silly to our souls, y'all. We can't yeah, help it. And you know, I think the thing about the, one of the other things about creatives is the thing that makes us so creative and, and in the moment and inspirational, and that's for you guys too, is the fact that. You know, you got to have that childlike wonderment to make it, to create, to open up that part. It's the childlike part that actually can say, oh, and, and come up with the idea. The very, um, this is me. You, you said the bed. exact words that, that we say when we're sitting around thinking about, it, oh, this is going to be the best book ever. That's exactly and how we say. You, and you start and you're like, 
in a zone and you can't stop yourself. I feel if you're too buttoned up, you can't get to that. I remember a teacher told me when I was um, I was seven and I, I decided I wanted to be an uh, author. And this teacher told me, don't worry, when you get older, um, old, um, as a, an adult will kill your imagination. So you need to write now because you'll never be an author later because your imagination will be. And mm. I years, every year, working on making sure that my imagination stayed exactly the same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm a writer. I need to find that teacher. You know, I went to a class that Lentine Price gave um, probably early 2000s, I would imagine. And in the master class, she said there were three things that are essential to be a great singer. You have to just already be aware of the fact and know, and by no know, meaning know in your heart that you've been gifted with the voice. That's the first thing. The second thing is you have to have an amazing ear. You have to, the ear has to actually do what the conscious mind does. It has to be the driver. She said, but the third and most important is you have to have a vivid imagination. You have, that's what this whole thing about what we do is. This whole notion of being an artist and being a creative and wanting to go out into the world and share it and then be able to attain wealth from it means that you have to be, you have to pass the place of where people say, oh, but that's not practical. You gotta be willing to pass that place and say, fuck practical. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I this mean, it's a perfect place to end. It's a perfect place to end, and it's, and it's so true. And it's so true. So, where can people find out more about you and well, your. More importantly, buy um, EPs now? Uh, okay. EPs? Yeah, EPs now. You, you um, and find out more about Seamless Voice also. Perfect. Well, the great thing about finding out about Marlon Saunders and the Seamless Voice is the website is put together so well that you can type in either theseamlessvoice.com and get there, or you can type in marlinsaunders.com and all the information you will need about there. I mean, about me and the programs and things I've done is there. Also, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Marlon Saunders, uh, Facebook, Marlon Saunders. Um, the EP that I did in the midst of, of the pandemic called Meditate on the Dream is on all of the musical platforms. Um, I'm so proud of that work. It's, it was really, 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 really just a, a wonderful opening up. I have, I'm working on a new project called Ritual, which will probably drop. I'm hoping I can get it done by fall. You know, if not, then it'll be early next year. And there's an amazing project that I worked on with producer John Manny that's coming out in July. It's called John Manny and the Collective, but these singers, woo, it's about five, singers and it's like a dance upbeat type of throwback type of uh, record ep um so that's going to be out in july so look for that and jazz festival which you guys would come on to the eastern shore for is the, that's definitely uh 9 11 that weekend september mm -hmm. 11th but it's going to be right down near the water so it'll be good then after that's done i finish i think i go on around jiro and i supposed to go on around 2 2 30 and then from there, we're going to go to my, my parents' house. And then we're going to just sit down and, you know, we're going to get it in. And then seven that night, we're going to, Jiro and I will do a, a show at this place called Red Acres, which is like this huge farmland, but they got this small space in the back, which they're trying to make for creative things. Who never knows? You might come on the Eastern Shore and might want to do some, you know, reading of your work down there. Maybe. Maybe. I know. Oh my God. Well, okay, so we have, have to end it. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Like, we have to be professional. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> on the show today. We really appreciate it. And you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andweethought.com or andithoughtladies.com. While you're there, take a moment, go to the ladies tab and see the charities that we probably support. Maybe we can support them also. We thank you in advance for that. And just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys. From Will No No. And Jade, bye bye. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening.